Hello and welcome to another episode of Simplified. This time minus Chuck and Shriket. But not to worry, you have Tony and myself with extra husky, sexy voice. Yeah. Because I'm just recovering <laughs> from a sore throat. Yeah. So, how have you been, Tony? I'm actually coming on to the podcast after a long time. Yeah, I've been, I should be asking you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, where all our, around the world. Mm. Where is our foreign chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had a good month, month and a half in the US, uh, yeah. going to many places. And uh, directly that I came back, we went off to another vacation on uh, somewhere in the first week of August to Kurg. Yeah. And uh, therefore, I was absent. I was taking a vacation and growing a big belly. And <laughs> I also happened to have a you know medical exam and all my numbers have gone for a toss. So it's starvation for me, for me from oh. now on. So, mm. <laughs> no more ice cream. <laughs> so, hey, yeah, no more ice cream. <laughs> or have you cut something else out of a diet, which will make for yet another... <laughs> Superb simplified <laughs> episodes of it. Yeah. <laughs> I am I'm supposed to, so I have basically cut out uh, carbs. And oh. the infernal things are in everything. So I, you can't really cut <laughs> everything out because yeah. if you are to live in civil society and people keep giving you food and you keep saying no, people yeah. get angry and then they stop <laughs> offering you food. Mm, <laughs> You're a carb-based so, life form anyway. Yeah, I'm a carb-based <laughs> life form. <laughs> mm. So... Yeah, I just, uh, it's just back to Bombay and trying to get used to the rain. The rain itself is lovely, no problem, the rain, but the roads have basically gone for a toss. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's a standard thing in Bombay. All Bombay guys, like how Londoners keep complaining about the weather, Bombay guys yeah. keep complaining about the roads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed you brought only green card behavior, no green card accent home. <laughs> oh, <know>. yeah. <laughs> this. Actually, yeah, I've been, uh, subtle, I've, I've been dropping subtle uh, sort of hints that I've got. So I call uh, Ladyfinger okra and <laughs> I say cilantro instead of coriander. So subtle, like, you know, very subtle. I don't want to tell anyone. I've got, then you say okra, I say, oh, you went to the... US? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Very good. So, yeah. And otherwise, I'm really happy to be back because I, I was mostly in the Bay Area. It's bloody cold. And I realized that I hate cold weather. I, I'm just, I just, it's about 16 or 18 degrees uh, C. And the wind is See, blowing what, what, all you the You used time. Uh, degree centigrade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> subtle. That was subtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, even more subtle order, I would have just mentioned it in Fahrenheit. So yeah, correct. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it was so cold and yeah. everyone else, okay, the local guys will be merrily walking around in shorts and t-shirt. But Sheila and yeah. I were like completely swaddled like Eskimos, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sort of waddling around all over the place. How many people pitch their startup to you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, I, I uh, air of a man who is willing to throw yeah, money. At. You just uh, yeah, <laughs> in the Bay Area, you just have to go sit anywhere, coffee shop, yeah. railway station, <laughs> yeah. Pier Thirty Nine, anyone. Someone will come along and pitch a start. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, no one pitched any to me. But yeah, that's that's something which speaks uh, more of me than the locals no this this means that you don't have a sticker on your forehead that says uh, <laughs> idiot or <laughs> yeah. something like that right so, <laughs> yeah, that's a compliment is. take in the it's take a in discussion the box, yeah it's a distinction <laughs> yeah <laughs> Cool. So, Naren, so, uh, what hmm. are we talking about today? So, what? Glad to yeah. So, today I I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite uh, sports. Like, so you can have arguments whether it's a sport or a game, but it's classified to sport, which is chess. Yeah. So, yeah, I am very passionate about chess, and yeah. I am terrible at it. Now, also. all so the I more mean, reason why people people didn't pitch you startups. Like uh, you yeah. have the. <laughs> intellectual heft to not be throwing money at random things yeah chess yeah so chess i'm i'm inordinately fond of chess and i waste hours and hours uh, on you know sort of watching chess on youtube or playing it or whatever and uh, i just love the game i'm terrible at it i've been playing uh, 
since since college days and never managed to achieve anything of any distinction uh, i managed to get on the college team once because uh, yeah. they needed four people and there were exactly four people who including me who knew how to play chess so uh, like knew the moves and uh, i obviously got my butt kicked but i i acquired a healthy respect for the game and <laughs> over a period of time it's very you know it needs a lot of thinking is very stimulating very challenging very yeah. absorbing and uh, so yeah it's it's been a passion with me and uh, the reason i wanted to talk about it was very recently india hosted the 44th chess olympiad in Ooh. chennai yeah. you must have seen whatsapp videos were circulating of the you know of the promo and the intro and the opening yeah. ceremony the closing ceremony and things like yeah. that it was quite a spectacle and yeah uh, the entire things. city was dressed up no like yeah they, they entire, there was one the big uh, main bridge one of the sort of landmark uh, bridges there was completely covered in uh, you know the chessboard squares everything yeah. and uh, i saw that on the whatsapp you know i believe it's called the napier bridge as our yeah, napier bridge he has helpfully pinged us yeah yeah so that was uh, you know everything was really the production values were great and yeah. this is unusual for uh, for india and especially for chess because when i was growing up chess was very very niche sport there wasn't much sponsorship there wasn't most people you know they had to so one of our mutual friends amit verma was yeah. a you know he was a college level chess player and he used to participate in chess tournaments and yeah. he talks about going to chess tournaments and being asked to sleep like you know in one big hall just on yeah. the floor and there was really nothing no facilities or no encouragement or literally no yeah. money but that i so guess that was clearly, the case clearly it is know. it is a sport then because all all sports people like <laughs> yeah, all for yeah that, that's what he says he says that uh, yeah. they had to share that hall and yeah. there were, like there would be a hall uh, housing 300 people and there would be two toilets and yeah. like you know everyone had to go and muscle their way in and use the toilet and you had uh-huh. to the chess players who yeah. were basically 90 pound weakling had to go and compete with wrestlers and <laughs> judo cards and boxers all <laughs> they, no, they were the last but, days but they would strategize and uh, make sure they got but i apparently it did work amit <laughs> verma said that was a, that cured him of his chess playing uh, at least just <laughs> competing fever and then he gracefully yeah. stepped out and uh, <laughs> didn't bother going back again but this time they spent so it, it it's uh, it's the story of how india got to hold the chess olympiad is the yeah. story by well, but what is an olympiad olympiad sounds like one of those uh, talent search examination kind of thing <laughs> something you yeah. do at so it's, maths it's, olympiad science it's olympiad. one grand jamboree all the countries in the world Uh, yeah. send their teams uh, okay. roughly four players uh, plus one reserve player five five person per country oh. and sometimes like, more like the davis cup in tennis yeah sort of davis cup yeah okay. and olympiad because you know to emphasize the sort of united nations character of the whole thing oh everybody in the world plays it yeah and yeah. uh it's held once in two years unlike yeah. the olympics which is held once in four years yeah. so this is held by by annual not by annual by annual uh, by annual yeah by annual yeah. so this is uh, uh, you know this is a regular and india wasn't even supposed to host it it was to be hosted in a town called khanti mansisk so khanti mansisk is in the ussr or not just you whatever the russia or some place yeah, i think russia oh, okay. yeah right. and uh, russia sort of negligently sort okay. of went to war with ukraine so yeah. they you know the powers that be said no no you can't host it which is kind of uh, makes sense because you know yeah. how, how do you get into the country and get out and yeah. uh, when all this was happening the secretary of the all india chess federation on guy named bharat singh chauhan i think so he texted the president of fide who is a fide is the body that like like fifa for yeah. soccer fide is the body that controls 
uh, chess internationally is the uh, french acronym for chess federation fifa yeah uh, FIFA. there is no c anywhere in it though yeah uh, chess is pronounced h x e c h e c s Oh, okay. So, Your Alliance yeah. Gone Case is coming to... Yeah, Alliance Gone Case is well named. <laughs> <laughs> HX, okay. But why is it French? Like, doesn't chess have its origin somewhere in India or something? Yeah, yeah. So, What is the French uh, takeover? It could have been Russian. Uh, it, it was... Uh, so, in India, and it, it has a pretty ancient history. And people went around the 5th or 6th century under the Gupta Empire. There was a yeah. game called Chaturanga. and chaturanga was you know it's like people have written about it and mentioned it and things like that and enough has been written about it to reconstruct it even so they know the names of the you know different pieces they know the name for example the queen the piece which you know as the queen is known as the minister yeah and even malayalam is called yeah. uh, minister actually mm-hmm. mantri yeah, yeah. Mantri. mantri yeah it had its own origin and then it went to Uh, arabia you know all arab lands and yeah. there chaturanga became shatranj oh okay mm-hmm. and from shatranj it went to europe and uh, i don't know somebody who has been having too many beers or wines or whatever changed converted shatranj to chess so that that took a lot of beers or wines or whatever <laughs> they must have been drinking at that time yeah and from the 15th uh, century onwards it was widely played in europe all of europe and the rules were slightly different they are the modern rules of chess slightly but uh, yeah. uh, not by much yeah and it was a game of the elites for a longest time okay so general janta you know educated people and you know those kind of like the upper yeah. classes knowledgeable play. knowledgeable knowledgeable yeah yeah <laughs> so very rightly it was held in chennai because as we all know <laughs> chennai crowd yeah. is knowledgeable and uh, they i mean you europe i mean people played chess for a few hundred years till yeah. someone decided to document the moves they realized that uh, moves could be written because it's Ooh. a 8 by 8 square so you can you uh, know, so there are two e4. notations yeah e4 yeah. and e5 that's called the algebraic notation but back in the day people used uh, something called the english notation right? which was oh, you would okay. say pawn to king's fourth or ah, right, right, right. bishop to bishop's fifth place or something like that yeah right so but the point so, was that the, people started annotating yeah games and this basically people play correspondence chess as well right as in like basically yeah, yeah. that that came yeah that, that came yeah. later yeah <laughs> So, so there's actually, a there's thing short about story called uh, hmm. the Gossage and Warbedi B in papers. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like makes me uh, laugh. Woody Allen, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woody Allen, hilarious. Just, just <laughs> Warda Bidian, Warda Bidian. That's Warda Bidian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But basically, they yeah. play a correspondence chess, and halfway through, uh, no one can agree on what the position of the board actually is and stuff like that. But it's a hilarious one. I think we should link it from the show notes. And yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you have a read? Yeah. But anyway, so notations. Yeah. So. then people started uh, you know writing things down note and and you could play over games that someone else had played yeah. and uh, you know sort of analyze moves yeah so you can you know in, on the fifth move somebody moved a knight instead of a bishop yeah. and that had a profound effect on the game and yeah. maybe he won the game so you try and figure out what it was in that move that made it so powerful and right. as uh, time went on you know an entire body of theory got created around this thing and yeah. people started understanding principles so for example one of the principles is development so you know when you know yeah. the starting position of the chess when when you start playing with someone else your idea yeah. is to develop as many pieces as possible so that once your yeah. army is out you can fight attack or defend much better Mm. then if your army is just behind a wall of pawns and yeah. the second is people figured out that if you control the central squares the center is called yeah yeah the mobility of so you know your pieces control it so you can obstruct enemy pieces and you you can facilitate your own pieces so yeah. they found that 
and then sounds like excellent political strategy also yeah yeah a lot of there are a lot of these there this guy named gary kasparov you must have heard. he yeah. he wrote an entire book about how chess is life and he's he was like mapping chess principles to life principles yeah. i haven't read the book yeah. i'm pretty sure it's boring but um, yeah they they have done that but even so, even if you play just a little bit uh, the amazing thing about the symmetry and this is sheer beauty of how the pieces and the board works yeah yeah the geometry of the uh, you know uh, so there is a genre of uh, chess called chess yeah. problems right oh, so okay. it's a predetermined so if you and i are playing it could be anything yeah. the position it follows but yeah. i could compose a chess problem like a crossword yeah. it would be it would be very cleverly composed and there oh, would be yeah. one key move and right. only if you find the key move and the key sequence can you solve the problem right and the problem solver's talent lies in making yeah. the problem unique so yeah. there has to be only one solution and no other solution so oh, nice and it shouldn't be obvious at all and right. they use a lot of these geometric uh, you know principles yeah. or like like features oh. of geometry so you know you're on a diagonal and something is on a file and that forms a right triangle and then somewhere another piece comes it it either deflects or obstructs or you know sort of does something else and changes the you know changes the configuration totally or changes the solution yeah. totally you do basically pray yeah. to pythagoras and Yeah, yeah. Pratha Gorasa is one of the guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> have you played though, this game called Really Bad Chess? No, 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 I haven't. Really bad what, what chess is, is basically yeah, it's basically you were playing against an AI and uh, mm. it has a score from 0 to 100 uh, in terms of mm. like the difficulty. So, you don't have you have the regular chess board but not the regular chess pieces. So, you mm. might have like let's say five knights, two queens. Mm. like only three pawns something like that mm. and it's placed in a, such a manner that you have the advantage till it hits 50 if you cross mm. 50 then the ai has an advantage but basically like mm. completely random pieces right so mm. uh, like your entire sort of study and everything goes out the window although it is the same same board and stuff like that mm. but like the game itself the actual chess is so beautiful that uh, obviously i mean it's it's endured so much uh, time and tribulations and yeah, yeah. netflix and what not right and we still talking about chess so yeah so it's very uh, once once you get it once you get hooked on to it it yeah. uh, you know you most chess players will not play any other game they just yeah they just incidentally my dad actually told me when i was really small that you shouldn't play chess don't play chess he basically banned us from playing chess because his contention was that you know he got really addicted to it and like even when he was like resting away from the game his mind would be full of you know that yeah. move and this move and what yeah, you yeah. could do and stuff like that i so, can relate yeah. i can totally relate to that you know sheila keeps complaining that i keep playing chess on my phone all the time i'm trying to yeah. i'm i'm sort of in rehab right now so i'm not playing chess now but uh, <laughs> yeah so no for chess, the longest no time <laughs> yeah no chess no card i for the longest time i'd actually convince sheila that so i'd read somewhere that you know at that anand right vishwanath anand when he was playing yeah. his one of his world championship matches he would uh, you know it's so intense you know they they sit for hours and so intense he would lose almost a kilo in weight yeah so we weighed himself yeah. before he would be you know that that was the level of exertion he would lose that much yeah. by way of perspiration or something <laughs> like that and i read somewhere that you burn 400 calories so I had convinced her that I don't need to go to the gym because I play chess. So for the longest time, I got away, and then then somebody said, "Hey, this all nonsense. You have to be Vishwanathan Anand for to lose 400 yeah. calories. No, Narendra Shah yeah. is not going to lose 400 calories." I, I think the, the brain calories. exertion on your, I mean, the brain exertion of calories remains pretty much constant, no? respective of what you do during. The, it's just the intensity of the competition that sort of. It's known the, that uh, intense brain activity increases yeah. the metabolic rate. So, if you're really thinking very hard, your metabolic rate, your blood pressure, your heart rate, everything increases. Oh, okay. So that is there. Yeah. But whether it really burns 400 calories, I don't know. I I mean, I've I swore on yeah. uh, you know everything that it does when when I was telling this to Sheila. But yeah, 
to my simplified audience i will make no such claim <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah no i had once asked uh, krish ashok this question because there is a very famous espn article which talks about the grandmaster diet and how you lose weight while hmm. barely moving right and he had basically said uh, magnus carlsen will be burning pretty much the same ballpark as federer overall hmm. but it's very hard to lose weight fast anyway other than simply eat less brain caloric burn seems to be a reasonably constant 400 per day regardless of hmm. what kind of problems oh, okay. one does so i would burn 400 calories even if i was not playing chess yeah even if you just like doing simplified <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah good <laughs> i can honestly tell <laughs> sheila that i'm burning 400 calories yeah so back to the olympiad right like but is chess really a spectator sport i, I mean in terms of like so spectator this is really, this is the beauty of it Yeah, it yeah. wasn't, right? So I used to go and watch. There's a place in Bombay called Zandu Canteen. So Zandu is okay. the famous Zandu Balm of the song. Oh. <laughs> huh? really? So Zandu Balm used yeah. to be manufactured by a company called Zandu Pharmaceuticals, which was somewhere in Dadar. Right. And okay. they had a canteen. They had a cafeteria. And someone in the among the powers that be was yeah. a chess fan, right? Yeah. So he <laughs> made this uh, place available to... for people to play and like really serious guys who were masters and international masters we didn't have too many grand masters but later we had one in bombay named uh, pravin thipse we used to go there hang out and uh, watch these people play so when the big guys were playing a group of us would stand around and watch and most of it would go over our heads because the thing about chess is if your intentions are very plain and obvious the guy who you know you you have a tactic in yeah. mind you want to capture his bishop yeah. so you line up your rook but he can see your pieces too so he yeah. just guards yeah. it with something else so you know nothing happens yeah. so you have to be really sort of you know very vague about your you know mask your true intentions play moves and finally when you play the key move everything yeah. comes together and the guy you know he hasn't seen it beforehand so he has no defense yeah. that kind of yeah. uh, thing mm-hmm. so we couldn't we used to just hang around but we couldn't understand a thing till the internet took over and yeah. initially it was uh, blogs and uh, websites and things of like that which would analyze yeah. games so you could yeah. you know they would, they would say that okay Uh, your uh, you know this guy played h3 and uh, yeah. this was also played by shirov in his game yeah. against topalov and that kind yeah. of thing and yeah. some guys would also tell you that if you didn't play h3 then the bishop would come to b4 and you know or whatever yeah. g4 yeah. and do something else and uh, then you would you would get have that aha moment but even yeah. that required a lot of visualization youtube made it absolutely easy for yeah, even people like yeah. me to understand because yeah. there you have you know you the, the guy can actually move pieces around and show you a sequence what would have happened yeah. and because of the explainers the game comes alive there are a lot of really yeah. good uh, in fact i think i'll add a couple of youtube channels in the show notes in the, yeah. in the yeah, description so people who like it can so they explain so the one i watch one or two that i watch they explain it really well yeah and uh, it's very engaging because you yeah. you are you know you, you know why what what the guys is like someone like carlson plays it's very difficult yeah. to understand what he's up to his moves look very random <laughs> yeah. and uh, the his opponent can understand most of them which is why the opponent's moves also look extremely random Yeah. and then they because, because they study study the entire yeah they study the first, yeah. Right? Yeah. so this really increased the popularity of chess number 1 and number 2 yeah. i think during the lockdown the popularity really went up several yeah. fold because uh, chess does take a little bit of time yeah and so no, that's actually like, when i started playing chess during the lockdown mm-hmm. for the first time mm-hmm. i created like a chess.com account and not yeah. that i'm good at it but at least like uh, i yeah it's fun right it's, it's just it's engaging yeah. and it's kind of uh, yeah. uh, you know it's beautiful in its own way yeah cool so uh, before we get that into made the chess, chess yeah that made chess a spectator sport which is why yeah. there was a the like Olympic. a cambrian explosion in india 
and uh, you know yeah. over the last decade and a half or two it started because of anand actually in like yeah. anand is actually i don't know four or five years younger than i am and yeah. i remember we were all you know he was literally the only guy whom anyone knew yeah. you didn't know many of the others but he inspired yeah. a lot of people to take up chess and chess yeah. was a pretty low paying sport yeah even now it isn't like great but at least a lot of people can think of being professional chess players they can do that as a full time occupation back in the day there was no chance you couldn't mm-hmm. earn a living i mean anand also yeah. i think he just about scraped through for most of his initial career it's yeah. just that he was the only son and his parents were you know had what decently middle class and they were indulgent and they they probably sponsored his air fare and because lo- yeah. all the playing used to happen in europe so yeah. it was a long time it was only when he became a junior world champion or something anand became that and yeah. that's when i think the government took it a little seriously and they gave him some kind of support yeah before that yeah. it was pretty much nothing yeah but his feat is pretty incredible right given like basically he didn't have grow up with the internet he yeah, yeah. he was a natural kind of he was just one of those or, yeah. rare freaks who was just like yeah. just brilliant at it just he was just incredible at it and yeah. uh he was like 14 15 years old and he was just killing it in the indian chess scene yeah he just defeating everyone and he was called a lightning kid because he he just play really quickly and the other mm. guys would take you know 15 minutes 30 minutes for a move and this guy would just yeah. trot out them and he would just beat them yeah and then uh, someone told him i think uh, someone senior in the chess playing fraternity that you are wasting your time in india because you don't have quality your quality opposition you should go abroad and play so that uh, you know you can play someone uh, who's world yeah. class and then your your game also improves yeah and he did that and uh, then of course his achievements are legendary he became a world champion and several times yeah. over yeah and he, uh, on that note uh, let's take a quick mm-hmm. break before we come okay. back with yeah. the olympiad in chennai welcome back to simplified where we are talking about chess and the olympiad narin if you were in chennai you would mm. probably call vishwanathan anand tambi because he's yeah. uh, he would have been younger to you Tambi yes. incidentally also was the mascot for the chess olympiad in chennai it was a knight if i am not mistaken knight with a lungi it's pretty nice oh that, yeah <laughs> this actually is uh, probably a vesti mm. vesti mm. and a shirt yeah so narin tell us about the yeah. chess olympiad so we got the chance to host the olympiad just before the break we were talking about anand and his achievements and how yeah. popular he made it all over the country but especially so in tamil nadu right Yeah. Tamil Nadu really took to chess and about half the grandmasters in India are from Tamil Nadu today. But yeah. there are a lot of grandmasters there are some 75 in India from good 30 or 40 are not from Tamil Nadu they're from all over the place so you know is the inspiration has definitely been far yeah. and wide. Yeah. I think the latest is obviously Ramesh Babu Pragnananda Ah uh-huh. he is of course I'm going to talk about these guys there are four kids yeah. five actually who have been kicking ass in on the world stage like very seriously we'll come to that in a while I'll just I'll just sure. talk about the olympiad itself so yeah. because of the very uh, you know very thoughtlessly entering the war <laughs> Russia thoughtlessly entering the war yeah. they had to change the thing and uh, we our uh, federation guys reached out to uh, you know reached out to the fide people and said we are willing to host it so yeah. uh, apparently what he he just texted him the indian secretary texted the fide secretary or president or whatever uh, saying that uh, can we host something or and that, this guy texted back saying olympiad question mark yeah and this guy say you know he apparently said okay sure let's do it and very unusual for india they managed to get a yes because obviously he you know he has to have government so he went and met a sports minister and then they said okay we are on board so he and then they had to decide where to host it 
they said it's your call the secretary the aicf secretary and he's from delhi but yeah. he said i don't want to have it in delhi because in july delhi is likely to be really hot yeah like crazy hot la no? it's like yeah. and so let's let's host it in chennai and so he Which more than me famously uh, is known for its temperate weather yeah very yeah. it snows frequently <laughs> as we humid. all know yeah <laughs> So he uh, lands up and uh, meets the chief minister Stalin, yes. and Stalin he says lit it's like he says yes immediately and literally by the end of the day it's done. Like he meets oh. in the morning and by afternoon it's done. In the sense they've they've committed funds, yeah, which is not a trivial matter because you have to guarantee they had to guarantee something like ten uh, million dollars or something. to wow. the fide i mean that yeah. you know, that they had to you can't let the them sleep on benches basically <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they went around they organized they had a few months not much 3 3 months or 4 months and they organized accommodation playing venue you know like covid protocols and at that time they didn't even know what the covid situation was going to be like so they had to yeah. have an entire you know covid task force vaccination RT-PCR test, God knows what else, quarantine facilities, everything. Eventually, some seventeen hundred and odd players landed up, and mm. wow. entourage and all. It was something like three thousand people from a hundred and eighty-six countries, and uh, notable. Well, uh, was Russia at, allowed to take part? So Russia and the Ukraine won. I think no. Yeah, I think yeah. Russia and the Ukraine didn't take part. China said it's not sending its team, so Chinese team didn't come. Oh. Pakistan also decided not to come, but apart okay. from that, and Rwanda for some reason decided not to come. <laughs> so okay. I'm sure the AICF uh, secretary sobbed into his pillow that night. But <laughs> otherwise, everyone else, 186 of those countries came, including yeah. one country which has been dissolved in 2010. That country also has been that there's a country called wow. Netherlands Antilles, Antilles. Okay. But so how, how they dissolved in, but the federation has not been dissolved, so they sent a team, something like that. I don't know Amazing. what the exact story is, but yeah. <laughs> so, do you do you know the there. story of the Sri Lankan handball team that uh, no, no. went to Germany? Uh, it's also a movie. Uh, in I think it's in it's a Sinhala movie called Machan. Uh, uh-huh. Basically, they are a group of uh, sad slum residents. who go to germany for the handball tournament as the official sri lankan team mm. and basically i think they lose a couple of matches really badly but then they all vanish basically they don't want to go back to sri lanka <laughs> they want to live in germany and then they check back with the sri lankan uh, team and they they like we never sent a handball contingent so uh, <laughs> basically yeah fun things <laughs> but yeah netherlands and well played teams actually also yeah then uh, yeah it was a resounding success and uh, you know it's one rarely gives uh, finds occasion to give credit to any government uh, in <laughs> india yeah. but yeah this time i think they did a pretty good job equipped themselves honorably uh, everyone yeah. like you know all there's no you know it was unstinted uh, you know work and everyone yeah. contributed indian and what's the format of an olympiad so four players a team and yeah. you know you have sort of a you know you you keep going up you know it's an like you play each other and if you, the higher yeah. you go the more points yeah. you score you play higher and higher at the other so you are, you're basically divided into two groups then you yeah. you know play with those groups and the toppers in that group play the groups of the you know the other guys and so it's it's basically yeah. a you know the better you do the stronger the opposition you face king, king of the hill king of the hill king of the hill yeah king of the hill kind of yeah but it's always one on one right there's no there's four, no four double people. so four four and four yeah one on one yeah yeah you can't like yeah. two guys but also move 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 man move move all that no 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 don't 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 all that not that is the standard thing when we play chess and all hey, boy, what do you know you mad what man rook 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 yeah 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 all that doesn't happen yeah But uh, and is it, it was, is it timed or is it? Uh, it is timed. It's like, timed. It's uh, okay. usually you have uh, two hours or one and a half hours. I forget for the first forty moves. Okay. And yeah, so if you don't make those forty moves in that time, 
yeah. you f- lose the game. Okay. Then you have another uh, like one hour for the next twenty moves. Okay. And then after that, you have another hour for the entire game. But you have an increment wow. for every move that you make. So every time you make a move, you thirty seconds get added to your clock. Oh, okay. But, but what, what's the then, like average hmm? number of moves that it takes for a chess game to control? So typically at a master level, it'll be forty, forty-five moves. Okay. Or fifty moves. So it's expected but, to conclude. Yeah, there is a good standard deviation. So sometimes uh, you know games will end in thirty to uh, you know yeah. even as low. As, so there are games. as low as uh, i'm talking about master otherwise it's you know among amateurs four moves also you know yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah. you know sometimes it will be as low as 10 or 12 moves 15 moves under 20 is called a miniature so when it's under 20 moves it generally makes the headlines because normally gms will not lose masters will not lose yeah. in, in that short of time yeah. unless there's a yeah. blunder oversight sometimes you know just yeah. you just overlook a move and then and they will resign so you and i if we were playing we wouldn't resign yeah. till i mean there's no question of resigning we would just like you know it yeah. has to end in a checkmate or something but yeah, uh, yeah. i'm still hoping that level, you will make a counter blunder basically yeah, yeah basically just hang it <laughs> and see what happens yeah hmm. but uh, yeah master and for level, a draw and for a draw it still goes up to the same number of moves or does it happen no, so it's uh, it's basically endless but the longest games are usually A hundred plus, hundred and thirty, hundred and forty okay. moves, hundred and fifty moves are wow. known. Okay. There are some rules. So one is a threefold repetition. So if both of us repeat yeah. the same moves thrice, that's an automatic draw. And there yeah. is a fifty. Even if there were other moves in between. No. Like no. if the positions are. Consecutively, moves. just three three times the same move. So I I moved yeah. maybe knight to say d five, and you moved yeah. bishop to say e five, and yeah. I moved knight back to whatever. C two, yeah, and yeah. you move your bishop back to whatever, and then you know we do the same thing, and again yeah. I move it back. Yeah. If that happens thrice, it is a draw by repetition, even yeah. if you made it by mistake. So by sometimes, uh, a player doesn't intend to make that move. I mean, he doesn't want to make a draw, but he forgets yeah. and he just moves it. Sometimes they repeat moves a couple of times just to gain time. Yeah. So you have to make uh, your forty yeah. moves. So you just he knows this is yeah. a safe move. He moves it, moves it back, and then yeah. moves it again. But yeah. if he moves it a third time by mistake, your yeah. opponent can claim a draw. The arbiter okay. is called in, and he can yeah. adjudicate. Oh, okay. So that happens, and there is something called a fifty move rule. A fifty move rule is if you move, if you have fifty moves without a pawn move or a capture, mm. it's a draw. So yeah. if you know I have a king and a bishop and a knight, which is yeah. mateable but not easy, and you only have a yeah. king, right. I could go. I mean, till the cows come home, chasing around, around without king. repeating. Yeah, yeah. But if I make fifty moves without a capture or without a pawn move, it's yeah. not wrong. It's okay. called a fifty move rule. Or you can have a yeah. draw by agreement, so you can offer a draw. Yeah. So back in the day, uh, grandmasters used to do that. so especially grandmasters from uh, the same countries we are playing a f- international match okay. you get half a point yeah. so you don't want to spoil each other's scores so you just play yeah. 10 moves you offer each other a draw and then go home yeah it's it's not like uh, football where you yeah. lose a point have, for a draw yeah. right no you do both, you do so you get one point me. you get one no, point for half, a win right? half yeah you yeah. lose half a point yeah in football a win is 3 but a draw is only one right so basically ah, okay. if you Like end up drawing one point is lost between the two of you, but in chess it's basically half and half, right? So half and nothing's lost. Yeah. So what happened at the Olympiad in Chennai? Yeah. So India had three entries: India A, yeah. India B, and India C. Oh, okay. So like twelve yeah. people, you know. Yeah. So India A were the top players. So there's one. Uh, Anand was not playing. Anand was like the mentor, coach kind of. You're not a coach actually, just a mentor. Yeah. I think he's because active chess, right? If to play chess actively, you really need to uh, be, you know, in good shape, like both yeah. mentally and physically. And yeah. uh, it's, it's pretty arduous. So these guys have to train. Yeah. They have to memorize thousands and thousands of openings and lines, and you know, yeah. really need to work hard on everything because openings yeah. is where uh, people can spring surprises because they have they have studied that opening at home. 
Mm-hmm. And if you don't know the right response, counter move. Yeah. You you end up with a disadvantage, and you keep you know you you probably lose the game or suffer a draw. Yeah. Uh, In the first couple of moves, you being a better player. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So everyone has to work. So yeah. I think Anand decided not to. <laughs> he yeah. decided he's too old for that. Yeah. So we had uh, on the first in the first group we had one senior grandmaster named Pentala Hari Krishna, who okay. was like India number two. We had one guy named Vidit Gujarati, who was India number three, and okay. we had a kid named Arjun Erigesi. So oh. this Arjun Erigesi is some sixteen seventy. He is one of the brigade of those four or five boys who were, who yeah. were taking the chess world by storm. Right. These guys have been beating everyone in the world. I mean, just just all yeah. the top guys. Yeah. So he was board yeah. number three, and board number four, I think, was a guy named S L Narayan, and also a grandmaster from. Yeah. And the India two group, okay, the India yeah. second team was yeah. uh, these four young uh, guys, and one yeah. slightly older guy. So four guys were one guy named D Gukesh. Okay. Who is now? He's been doing so well. He did so well in the Olympiad. His ELO rating put him now, like as of yesterday, I think he's in the top twenty. He's number nineteen or something. Wow, in the he's, world. In the world, he's now currently number two India. He's just behind Anand. He's that. Oh, okay. Uh, he's done that well. <laughs> On the second board was R Pragnananda, who is another yeah. kid, sixteen or uh, I think seventeen years old. He just just. He just yeah. celebrated his seventeenth birthday. Yeah, and he's he beat also Carlson been, once. He beat Carlson, yeah. And he's a he's known. All these guys are known to be indefatigable, so they will not accept defeat till the okay. very end. So this, yeah, and no they're extremely hands. tricky. Yeah, they're just extremely tricky. So they just you know every so one of the things chess player is the fatigue, right? So every move you have mm. to think as. Sharply or as intensely as yeah. you would, even when you are winning, even even when it's clear that yeah. you are going to win, even then yeah. because yeah. you don't know what this guy, what trickery this guy will come up with, right. and they end up exhausting uh, the opponent, and the opponent yeah. makes a mistake and you win. So oh. it's part of you know it's very pugnacious guys, and board yeah. number three is another really you know. All these guys are almost the same strength now. Yeah. A kid named Nihal Sarin. Yeah. Yeah. So Nihal Sarin is another kid. He he's also beaten the best of them. And on yeah. the fourth board, there is another kid named Ronak Sadwani. Okay. And the fourth board alternated between Ronak Sadwani and GM named Bhaskar Adiban. Adiban oh, Bhaskaran. Okay. So Adiban okay. Bhaskaran is twenty nine. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so you know these other kids, they've sort of threatened to start calling him uncle. Uncle. Day turns thirty. <laughs> so there's a lot, a lot, a great deal of chemistry in that team. There's a yeah. lot of fun they have. They keep. Uh, yeah. So I saw a video of Pragnananda celebrating his birthday. He was turned seventeen. Uh, yeah. So everyone yeah. caught him and threw him into the pool and you know all that <laughs> those kind of things. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so they really did well. Another uh, so Pragnananda has a sister named R Vaishali, an older sister, okay, couple yeah. of years older than him. And she was the one who was first uh, taught chess because her dad thought they were watching too much television. So he said, "No, no, <laughs> television is not good for you. Go play chess." <laughs> and they turned out to yeah. be both of them turned yeah. out to be world class, exceptional talent. So yeah. yeah, she India also had uh, two or three, uh, two I think women's team. the board did really well so okay. yeah overall india's performance has been pretty good we didn't win the gold unfortunately there yeah. was another team from uzbekistan which won the gold and i think armenia won the silver and oh, india wow. b won the bronze and india a didn't win a medal oh interesting mm. so it was that that tough the, the, these kids are really really good so you can uh, even as we speak there's a tournament called ftx uh, rapid or something in miami and pragnananda okay. he basically defeated uh, someone called ali reza firuja ali reza firuja was you know reputed to be the second strongest grandmaster after carlson yeah. he defeated him he defeated anish giri who is another okay. top 10 player 
He yeah. he's defeated everyone actually. And now I think next uh, round or something he's going to face Magnus Carlsen. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Oh okay. I thought uh, Carlsen's doing something no is not defending his next yeah, yeah. so he like very interesting so like carlson is street side right he's he's incredibly yeah. good he's he just <laughs> unbeatable yeah good he is yeah. is completely unbeatable and he's uh, yeah. like if he makes uh, he squeezes wins out of even completely dead yeah. equal position so he's got that yeah. so he has like an extra yeah. dimension that he sees and yeah. uh, hey, he i think at some he, point in 2019 he was the hmm. top of the table for uh, premier league fantasy football and <laughs> he celebrated that as a bigger win than chess because obviously in chess he doesn't yeah. have any competition but <laughs> so, yeah. he takes his chess very seriously like, he takes yeah. his chess very seriously hates losing but uh, yeah. he he does uh, you know he does give the impression that he he's not easily challenged by the yeah. level of opposition yeah so he decided he took the very radical view that he won't uh, you know he won't contest the world championship it was too boring yeah. for him and yeah. he gave up world so, championship is basically number 1 place number 2 so the world champion plays the challenger, challenger. who is selected yeah. by a big selection process like there are tournaments and tournaments okay. and then there uh, you know yeah. eight people are selected from all these tournament and then they play one tournament and the guy yeah. who wins that tournament gets to play the so right. it's a two year cycle to wow. become a world championship challenger and yeah. after all that was done it was won by one guy named yan nipomnichi and yan nipomnichi said i mean uh, carlson said i don't want to I, he's already beaten yan nipomnichi <laughs> the last cycle this is i'm not yeah. going to play so now okay. it's between and his the guy after him a chinese guy named ding liren so ding liren and yan nipomnichi are going to play play off for the world championship but yes. nobody in the chess world is going to take that world champion very seriously because carlson <laughs> is there he keeps yeah. playing tournament he is going to keep beating all of these people yeah. and uh, he is basically just going to make a big joke out of the world championship so anyway that was me going Fine. on and on about chess and uh, allegedly the olympiad but a lot of it non olympiad as well so yeah no mm. but uh, amazing yeah, great scene i <laughs> yeah. i hope i haven't been boring the pants of everyone but no we should we should play really bad chess one so uh, yeah. <laughs> we can, can catch it at a disadvantage yeah. but uh, otherwise we'll yeah. be very good at bad really bad time. chess yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this in fact is the Uh, really bad podcast equivalent of podcast where uh, <laughs> we go in all sorts of random directions you can't pin us down into 64 squares even if you want it so yeah thanks naren that was uh, fun very very yeah. interesting thanks. so basically I... india is it true that india will dominate chess for in the year i'm pretty coming? sure it will sure. it's got it's got yeah. the firepower it's got these yeah. really a half a dozen really strong players like world class they yeah. can beat anyone yeah and yeah. a good and number we, of we them we have more more people coming like population yeah, yeah. is not one of those uh, yeah factors here so yeah signing off now so yeah stay safe stay moving castled stay castled <laughs> and stay simple <laughs> bye bye